Gourmet Seventeen, A Taste of Poison. Well, hello, my brothers and sisters of the Nerd Nation, the hungry ass Nerd Nation. After uh, reading Toriko, that's for sure. Um, this is I, of course, from Jim here to bring you another review on the awesome and appetite-inducing, hunger-inducing, hunger-pain-inducing uh, tale of Toriko. Our last chapter saw us finishing off Volume 2, and here we are uh, about to dig into Volume 3. And uh, and I presume, you know, c- kind of finish up the uh, the Puffer Whale, uh, Puffer Whale story, Puffer Whale arc over here. So um, the last chapter in the last volume left us, of course, with uh, Toriko and uh, Coco actually being able to kind of erase their presence and um, and catch ten of these puffer whales and uh, and, and knock them out and um, and certainly bring them out and get ready for trying to extract these poison sacks. Uh, we also, you know, found at the end of it we were kind of left with uh, some person creature thing that we saw was swimming up. Uh, from the ocean side into Lagoon Cavern. And if you remember, uh, uh, Knocking Master Jiro had warned Komatsu about, hey, get your stuff and, and get out of there, because he, he sensed or felt some kind of danger or some kind of presence. So we know it's probably not a good thing that's coming along. So anyway, we shall dig right in, shall we? So um, this was one of those chapters that uh, not a ton of things happened, but there was a ton of explanation, and your mouth was watering the whole time, you know? Um, it starts out, and we know that uh, that Coco was going to, you know, he has about a 10% success rate in removing these poison sacks, and that he was going to be, you know, working on diligently trying to have as many successful uh, poison sack removals from these puffer whales as possible. So Toriko is, uh, he's over there fishing, and Komatsu's like, what the hell is he doing, you know? And Toriko, or uh, Coco says, just leave him be. He always, he has a kind of like a short attention span. So we assume that Toriko, uh, although for all the good things he has going, that he basically has like a, a grown-up ADD type thing going on. He has trouble focusing on one thing uh, for more than a few minutes. So uh, so Coco says, just leave him be, no big deal. So Komatsu is watching, uh, you know, and, and just in, intently watching what Coco's doing, and Coco winds up having uh, three failures in a row. Um, you know, he did three, three of these puffer fish in a row, and, and Komatsu's talking about uh, in his head, you know, oh man, that's three in a row, and blah, blah, blah. Coco winds up saying, listen, Komatsu, um, I, I need you to remove this poison sack. This one's right below its air bladder, and, and Komatsu's like, whoa, me? What are you talking about, you know? And he says, uh, he says, yeah, you know, I, I'm tired from catching these things and trying to concentrate so hard. My hands aren't steady anymore, you know, and you have to be very precise, very accurate, you know. So he goes to hand him a knife, and Komatsu's like, oh, no, that's okay. I brought my own, <laughs> you know. And, uh, and Coco makes uh, makes mention of these these knives and how they're just gleaned and polished uh, so beautifully and that uh, that clearly Komatsu is hiding some, um, has, has been hiding or, or suppressing some, some very good uh, talent, you know, as far as uh, just his, his culinary skills, you know. Uh, so it's really kind of cool because we wind up seeing this is, to me, this is kind of the Komatsu finally having a value other than being the guy that like whines and gets captured a lot and is scared of his own shadow. Um, Komatsu, we know obviously is a chef and the reason that he even comes on these adventures uh, with Toriko is because he wants to be able to kind of take it to the next level. So he's, he, although he is kind of a scared little fellow, <laughs> you know, he definitely has the ambition to want to take things to the next level and uh, to want to be able to prepare, uh, to see, catch, or help catch, prepare, eat uh, some of these dishes that, that he's only dreamed of before. So so it's really kind of cool how it's portrayed out over several pages. And, uh, and, and you know, Coco is very impressed with Komatsu's skill because he tells him, you know, the first thing he tells him is make this cut from the back fin to the here on this type of angle 10 centimeters deep and Komatsu's like and he's just like oh my god and Coco's like talking in his head he's like my god Komatsu stopped at exactly 10 centimeters you know without measuring or anything else he just he he knew you know he had definitely has a good feel and a natural talent for it and I think that's what they're trying to get at is that some people just have it you know some people just kind of have that intuition uh, when it comes to things like this um, you know with cooking with preparing meals and then um, it, it is kind of neat because they explain that there's to to be someone that well, there's special directions, obviously, and instructions to prepare one of these things when these puffer whales. But they explain that 
you know, and Kimatsu is talking, he's like, my God, there must be dozens or maybe even hundreds of different locations that these uh, poison sacks could be. So there's so many different ways to go about actually preparing them, you know. Uh, so so through a series of, of other cuts and everything else, you know, we wind up seeing it as kind of like a, it's almost like one of those like SpongeBob things, like two hours later, you know. And it doesn't really say that, but there's <laughs> there's now a pile of poisoned uh, puffer whales. And, uh, and we wind up finding out this is the final one that, that they're that they're working on. So obviously we've gone through seven more with uh, with uh, Kamatsu, but uh, but he's learning, you know, and, um, and and certainly he's picking up on it very quickly. Uh, considering you know they, they told us that there's only you know ten people in the world, uh, ten gourmet hunters in the world or chefs in the world that can actually successfully prepare a puffer whale, and you know Kamatsu <laughs> is quickly picking up on being the eleventh. So trust me, you tell me that I'm one of ten of anything in the world, um, and, that, and that's certainly something to. Uh, uh, something that I, I guess you'll know, be honored by, you know, something to behold because uh, because there's a lot of people in the world. And as I've been told, uh, Toriko's world is much bigger than ours. So, you know, apparently 100,000 deaths a, uh, every decade from when the puffer whales come around is more of a drop in the bucket than it would be uh, on our planet here with, with just uh, the mere 7.2 billion people that we have, that we know about. <laughs> so, but uh, it is very cool because we wind up seeing, you know, this, this, uh, this puffer whale laying on its side and Komatsu has, uh, with surgical-like precision, you know, been able to you know open up and cut the various areas that he needed to uh, that he was told you know for the preparation of it uh, as he followed the instructions from Coco very well and then he goes and it's like you all of a sudden see you know the the fish uh, the puffer whale and the one side of it exposed and you can see this dark this poison sack and it's also worth noting too that when uh, Komatsu cuts into it he says that it's very difficult to cut into because it's just very solid and if you remember the puffer whales are several meters long when they're in the ocean but when they come to uh, to migrate to spawn uh, in this this cavern lagoon, for instance, um, the the pressure uh, winds up winds up compressing their whole bodies, and that's what causes the poison sac and everything like that. Um, so so what it is is it's like it's this huge you know fish that's com- and this huge amount of taste that's compressed down to this tiny little it's like concentrated puffer whale. So uh, and at some point too, it's funny because uh, Toriko's like, hey, you know, cut me off a uh, cut me off a fin though and throw it over here, you know, and they're like, we're not ready to make the you know the the puffer whale fin sake yet. <laughs> So, um, so, you know, then, then, uh, th- this was the kind of the cool part for me where I was like on edge because, uh, obviously any wrong move here, um, you know, will poison the last puffer whale that they have, but Coco winds up telling Komatsu, he's like, now you have to remove that poison sack with your hand by hand and you have to gently remove the membranes from this side. Then when you're holding it in your hand, you take your other hand and you gently, and I'm just thinking, Oh my God. I mean, this is like, and they compare it to Komatsu compares it to like a game of Jenga, you know, trying to go and pull something out without disturbing everything else. So very nice real world comparisons too that, um, you know, that I think a lot of people can really identify with and go, Oh, I understand what you're explaining now. Um, so again, this is, this is no different, but, uh, he, so you see, and, and this is very tense. It goes over a couple of pages, you know, and Komatsu finally is able to go and remove this bad boy. And you're thinking, Oh God. And these things are so poisonous, you know, that, uh, whatever, a 10th of a milliliter of this poison, you know, could kill somebody, can kill thousands of people, whatever. Um, it's definitely a very deadly poison. And I'm thinking he's got this poison sack in his hand. If he accidentally bursts that fucker, no more Komatsu, right? So sorry, buddy. He didn't make it to volume four, you know? But uh, that's not what happens. He winds up getting the, uh, the the poison sack out and is able to dispose of it. Everybody's jumping up and down for joy triumphantly. Uh, like I said, it's a very shining moment very early on in the series for Komatsu because uh, as as opposed to him just being there to kind of be the uh, the, the, the comic relief or the one that uh, is is to get captured or that needs protecting, he really kind of shined and um, and, and did what what neither of the other ones could do uh, at least at this at least at this point. So. I thought it was nice in the way it was portrayed, and Komatsu got to get to get his shining light. So then they go and they prepare it, right? They cut off a fin. Toriko's going and he's preparing the sake and everything. And it's so funny because uh, you, you know you hear Coco tell him all you got to do is just pass the fin over the sake as it's warming, and that just that you know gives it a taste and everything. And Toriko's like, yeah, I know. And then he drops the fin in his sake. <laughs> like, yep, but I'm gonna take the whole fin anyway because he's just a total caveman glutton, you know, just more, 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 right? So then um, uh, Komatsu goes and prepares it and he does it. You uh, uh, sashimi style, uh, like sashimi tuna, and goes and, and just beautifully dices this up and makes like this platter 
of puffer whale that they're going to sit down and have. And Toriko goes and takes his chopsticks, right, when they're sitting down to have it. He's like, we're ready to eat. And he's just like, boom, just grabs himself a big old amount. And Komatsu's like, come on, man, you know, why are you going to be such a glutton, you know? <laughs> and that's when Coco even says, like, he's just a caveman at heart, you know? So he's drinking his sake, he's eating his wonderful tuna. And then you get, this is where it makes you hungry, because you get several pages of Toriko and the different faces that he makes. And then there's this one page spread of him just looking like he's floating, like just, and it's like he's floating through the sea of life and, and the ecstasy is washing over his body. And you're just thinking, my God, you know, and the way it's described and the way it's feeling as far as the taste. And, and then it goes and it shows and shows like Toriko and he looks all like shiny and muscled up and everything like that. And it's because it's like refreshing and it's like, um, it's a natural, um, uh, like a supplement, a natural like supplement, like a vitamin or something like that, but to the to the hundredth power, because now all of a sudden he's not tired uh, from any of the you know from from the effects of of course all the fighting and everything else that's happened on the way down here. He's like refreshed and he's good. And if you remember when they described the puffer whale, you know you eat this and it keeps you up for ten days, and you do this and it keeps. You know, so it's a very, very uh, cool stuff the way it's described and portrayed. And it, it makes you hungry. You know, it makes you want to have a uh, puffer whale, which, of, of course, is impossible um, at this point. So, <laughs> But uh, but it is it is pretty neat. The chapter ends up shortly after that. Uh, again, like I said, very, very nice and descriptive in the sense of everything. You know, just the ecstasy washing over Toriko um, and, and everybody else for that matter. Because he even asks Komatsu, you know, what are your thoughts on that? And Komatsu is just like, oh, my God, it's the best I've ever had. He's just it's an honor for him to eat this because his restaurant that he works at is a, a gourmet restaurant. He's never even they've never even had it, you know. So um, and then then they wind up talking too a little bit. Tariko, you know, makes mention of that's part of this gourmet hunter. The the fun of it is 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 catching and capturing and preparing and then tasting uh, something that you know that that you would never have been able to have before or that just wouldn't be the same if you went to a restaurant and had it or were able to buy it from a store. And uh, and even Coco is lost in the whole thing because then Coco's like, man, you know, maybe there is something. Look at this this gourmet hunter stuff is pretty fun. I may go back to this. So hopefully he's going to wind up being a mainstay uh, as a character. Now, the the chapter winds up ending off with uh, a nice double page spread. And uh, I don't even know how to describe this thing other than like the thing or the creature from the Black Lagoon, man. I mean, he's just that that creature or person or what have you that was coming up finally reached them now at the end of the chapter and comes out and it just sort of looks like this jumbled hairy mass with a sort of weird like anteater-like face. I don't know what the hell it is, who the hell it is, what it's there for, but it just comes up out of the water, and that's the end. That's the double-page spread, you know, that leaves you hanging for whatever this thing is. But like I said, I just think because it's Cavern Lagoon, I thought of, like, Creature from the Black Lagoon because I'm old and shit, and Creature from the Black Lagoon is something that <laughs> that I grew up uh, seeing, you know. So, uh, But but ultimately, that's what my my chapter question is going to be. Uh, not the Creature from the Black Lagoon thing, but but what do you think as far as the uh, uh, the, the descriptions that, uh, that the author gives on um on the food and the actual food itself you know we've only had a few opportunities now the rainbow fruit obviously was a was a big one the garara gator was to a lesser extent uh, wasn't described i think as well or in as much detail but what do you think about these i never thought that i could be interested in three four five six pages of describing what a food that's not even real tastes like but um i i definitely would i would i would take back that comment now because um and, and and I know it only gets better from here, so I can only imagine this is the tip of the iceberg. But what do you think, brothers and sisters, about uh, the descriptive nature of the food itself? Um, so leave your answer to that question in the comments down below. Feel free to hit the thumbs up, the like button if you should think that I deserve it, and uh, subscribe if you haven't done so already. We will look forward to catching all of you in the next one, nation. Just go ahead and hit that thumbs up button if this uh if this one made you hungry.